What's up everybody, it's Sparrow with a gun here from Sleepless Nights with another episode on the Space Engineers Inspiration series. We're starting things off today with the Tursus? Tursus? Not really sure how it's supposed to be said. Command ship. Um, which as the name implies, it is designed to be a command ship. Um, the description does mention it doesn't move very quickly because of that premise, that it wasn't, it's designed to be more of a floating command structure type thing that it wasn't really designed to move a lot so it's not going to perform like a fighter or anything such as that um, it's also modless but overall i just really like the exterior so far of the build there wasn't a whole lot of screenshots and stuff but the exterior just looked very different and i kind of really liked it it is a little bit small for what you would consider like a command vessel kind of thing it's not like the biggest ship in the fleet type of thing but overall, I just thought the design was really kind of unique and interesting, and it had a few different little crevices and things that were pretty cool looking. And also I'm noticing, now that I'm getting kind of a up-close view, there's a lot of glass, which we all know how much I love that. So, you know, there is that factor. Um, so let's go in and see if we can't get a peek on the inside here. Um, I do believe the description also mentioned that the interior was relatively vacant, so it was left that way so that, you know, when people downloaded it, they could kind of fill it how they wanted type of thing. So that's either that or it was that they hadn't gotten around to it. I don't really remember exactly what the description said about that, but either way, it was a conscious thing, um, not just something left vacant. But we have the reactors here, we have the uh, gravity generators there. And what appears to be, I think these are hangar doors on the side, so it probably seals everything and makes it pressurized, I would imagine. Um, what goes this way? Ooh, it goes down in here. Okay, so here's all your gyroscopes and such. Uh, what goes down this way? More gyroscopes. Okay. So yeah, there's definitely room to fill in your own kind of flair to it however you wanted to set it up kind of thing i do like the lighting and color and stuff like that too it, it does have a cool look to it and the layout like i said if you added some interior mods and things to kind of decorate the space the overall layout is actually pretty cool i'm guessing this leads out to the wing because i saw a door on the wing side which I'm assuming is this right here. It would appear so. So I saw this on the back of the wing, and it serves as a secondary entry, or maybe even a primary entry, and I went in through the secondary hangar area. Uh, jump drive here. I do like how many windows this thing has, though. It's, it's got a lot of glass to it, which is really cool. I do, I do like the open observatory style of having a lot of glass everywhere. It doesn't really make for a strong battleship when there's just a bunch of glass everywhere, but it does make for a cool observational type ship. Um, now we came up this way, so there's this route and this route. Let's check out this one first, see where this heads. Okay, so that leads to the upper bridge, and this leads to, I'm assuming, more of the front observational area, would be my guess, kind of thing. Well, that's weird. It almost looked like there was a hole in that for a minute because of the lighting. That was kind of funky. So yeah, I'm guessing this is some kind of forward observational area, although that could be doubled as a CIC or something if you put in um, some control consoles and such. And I'm guessing this leads up to the main bridge. It does. Well, kind of. Not sure if this is the main or not. Probably one of the mains. It does have this kind of like plus shape thing where you have a lot of observational rooms. Or, I say observational because there's really not much there but glass. But again, that could be a conscious thing of leaving it open for you to fill it in with whatever you wanted. But still, a lot of windows, which is really cool on a ship like this. I love I love lots of windows. Um, that's kind of one of those things that in real life, probably not super practical in space, but in sci-fi, windows to see out into space is always a cool idea. 
All right, now this area confuses me a bit because it almost looks like a landing pad or something there, but yet there's really no way to access that. And we have a multi-layer observatory here, I guess. Ah, there we go. So we have another... Whoop! I ended up outside the glass. Whoops! That's not supposed to happen. <laughs> okay, so that wasn't supposed to be a thing, although I totally missed this door. Now that I think about it, I had cut my way back through. Totally didn't realize there was a door there. But yeah, so I'm guessing that's more the observatory type. Or, um... There's actually a term for that on a ship, and I can't remember what that actual term is. But essentially, it's almost like a con tower. But that usually ends up being the bridge of the ship, I believe. So, I'm not really sure what it would be called, but it's kind of like the uh, crow's nest kind of thing. Now, as for movement, like we said, uh, we know it's not supposed to move very quick. Acceleration isn't actually too bad. Um, as you can see, it is very slow, but it's to be expected. Um, gyroscopes work pretty well. For, again, a ship this size, the mass and everything you have to take into account for. And it actually moves pretty good, but overall... Uh, the primary reason I picked it was just from the exterior point of view. It had some really intricate and cool unique shapes and stuff, particularly a lot of these angles and triangular arrowhead type designs, I thought were pretty neat. And I do like this glass front area. Like we said, it doesn't have a huge interior that's very fleshed out, but the uh, structure of that internal glass window thing is kind of cool. I really like that. So anyways, that's going to do it for this one. Let's move on to the next one. Alrighty, so next up we have the Arquitans. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Class Light Cruiser. Um, this is a Star Wars build, for those of you that aren't aware. Um, and it's actually pretty darn detailed, which I thought was really, really cool. And it has minimal mods. There's a few ramp things and stuff like that. But overall, nothing real, real crazy. We've got some TIE Fighter type ships dark, uh, docked in here, which are really cool looking too. But overall, I just really, really like the detail that went into the ship. Um, it's a very, like even down into the ridge along the side here, it has some really nice detail work. I'm not really sure. This actually looks like small grid. It is. Oh, I see. Okay, they did one of these. Um, okay. Were you do the little rotor head trick so we can get some detail in between the crevice. That's really neat. That's really, really cool. We got an airlock there we're going to use here in a minute. Um, I'm seeing that... I think I'm seeing that more often, though, in here. Or is this just... This might be blast door block. That's what that is. Yeah, so very creative use of blast doors and the rotor head difference and stuff to create some extra, extra added detail to everything but overall and I've seen this used a few times this is a really cool trick too for especially for um, ships with big thrusters and stuff is rather than using lights actually using LCD screens that are colored um, and then having the thruster or something elsewhere so that you get the look um, like this even Actually, nope, that is actually the hydro. I was like, wait a minute, that's not a screen. Um, so that's a really cool trick, too. Uh, if you're wanting to have the thrusters but give off a certain look, um, I really like that method. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, overall, I was just really caught by the... Um, by the exterior detail and stuff like that. Um, I was actually going to include a Discovery build, like from the, the new shows for Star Trek, the USS Discovery. However, when I was pasting it in and stuff, I couldn't find an accurate mod list, and so it kept not pasting in fully. It kept wanting to lose blocks and things, so I, I opted to scrap it, but I actually did want to include that since we did the Shenzhou uh, in the last episode. But alas, it was not meant to be for whatever reason. Um, let's see. Holding cell. Ooh. 
That's an interesting use for a hangar door. Actually, that's a very interesting use. So we have an armor slope there, a conveyor there, and then basically just a gap for the, the door. Oh, that is very Star Wars and Imperial right there. That's pretty awesome. I don't know what that sparking's about, but that's pretty cool. Especially when I was even going to say, this is this is great. This is how, how great Star Wars is. I was like, man, this is a real Star Wars-like corridor. Oh, wait. <laughs> I'm, I'm showing off a Star Wars ship. That would make sense. Dur, dur, dur. Don't mind me. I just work here. Um, so, lights. There we go. And then we have another holding cell there. With a screen here. I'm assuming this is to kind of give you a, a readout on your prisoners or whatever. Docking for the TIE Fighter goes there. Docking port there. That's docking starboard. Bridge and engineering. So let's go check out the TIE Fighter Bay first. Um, I have to admit, I am not skilled at this, but I'm noticing this happening a lot. I really like this blend of small grid with large. Um, it's a very, very cool trick for um, a way to do vanilla detail. Because uh, without it, if we're being honest here, without it, large grids definitely suffer in terms of detail on the interiors and such. This is yet another really cool trick. Um, I didn't realize how this was done until just a second ago. Uh, utilizing the new half block, and then behind that is a LCD panel with a white screen in order to create the illusion of solid light behind it. That's a really, really cool trick. Um, which is basically what this entire series of, ins of the Inspiration series is all about, is learning new building techniques and ways to add things that we want to do but didn't know how to do before. So that's a really cool trick. I also like the geometry here, the staggered uh, straight line lighting. It's very Star Wars, Death Star-y kind of-esque, which is really, really cool. Um, oh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm that guy that... Uh, you know, show, shows off, showcases a huge Star Destroyer size build and gets hung up on the hallway decoration. <laughs> but like I said, that is partially because that's kind of why I do this series in the first place is to learn new things myself and then show them off to other people as well by viewing some of the stuff that stands out to me in the workshop. We got a med bay here. I'm assuming we have the same thing on the other side. Or not. Cryo Bay. Okay, that's close enough. So we have a Cryo Bay over here. But yeah, recently, since they, since Keen actually added the functionality of, of attaching a small rotor head to a large rotor base, and it's not a glitch anymore, but it's a legit... Uh, wait, where are the lights, by the by? Uh, there's lights here. Did I just forget to turn them on or something down here? I thought this was for the hallway. There was a button down here. Lights, hallway. Yeah, there's that. Lights, hallway. Okay. So, no effect on this. Odd. Because there are lights here. They're just not on. It's very strange. I don't see a switch anywhere, though. So we're just going to use our um, headlamps for a minute until we can find a light switch. Cryo Bay here, I'm assuming, for the pilots, since that would make the most sense for emergency deployment. Uh, lights front docking. Ah! There we go. Did that turn these on down here? No. Weird. Okay. All interior lights. Oh, right. Uh... So that's going to turn everything on that was off, but it's going to turn everything off that was on. Uh, you know what? Since we've seen just that one area, let's just leave that on and see what it ends up doing. Uh, docking front. Okay, I'm actually a wee bit surprised there isn't an airlock. I guess this whole room functions as an airlock, but still. Uh, so then you would get out and go this way? 
how do how do we get do you just click in oh here we go that's cool and then they're using a uh projector it looks like to simulate the cockpit of the or the window of the tie fighters which is cool it's a neat trick um uh, yeah that's pretty cool and then this is the entrance door where we just came from so let's head back this way Yeah, I'm a little surprised at how that airlock is set up, but I guess it's not too big of a deal. And now we have the lights on, which is cool. Whee! Uh, but yeah, ever since they actually added, and it wasn't, because <clears throat> if I remember correctly, the, um, the rotor head trick used to be a glitch. Um, or not necessarily a glitch, but an unintended behavior kind of thing that, um that I think they actually added officially because now you can actually tell it you want to do ooh this is cool very Star Wars-esque with the like hanging catwalk thing it's not Star Wars unless somebody can fall off the, the path after all lights and engineering does that turn them on or off? looks like off probably because I just turned everything on alright and then this looks like thrusters. So this would be a very fun room to be in. Not. Um, but yeah, so ever since that they added the ability to add a small rotor directly to the rotor base. Now wait a minute. Why aren't you guys on? Thought they were on a second ago. Maybe not. Maybe I was just walking around in the dark and didn't realize it. Uh, but yeah, that's become a more common practice, and I think it's really great. I wish I was better at it myself, but I'm not. Um, bridge is that way, Atrium Command Center. But that uh, ability to add a small grid just for detailed areas, even like this, to make a table more unique and stuff, um, it's a really, really cool tr uh, way to do that. It's a really neat technique. Okay, so from here we have control of... Ooh! Was that a... That might have been a modded turret. Either that or it's... Oh, dag nabbit! I hate the camera. I really hate how the camera snaps to the character. Even when you're inside the ship. So stupid. It should always be outside if you're viewing it from third person. Dag nabbit. Thank you. So, actually, under further inspection, those actually look like they're, they actually look like they're customized and not modded but they're custom made turrets which is really impressive um so we have control of the rockets but i don't know where they're coming from i guess in the nose so we got looks like two in the nose um, and then we have control of the thrusters, the interior turrets, or PMVs. Not really sure what those are supposed to be. Uh, all interior lights, SOS beacon antennas, all the docking controls, which we're not really going to mess with too much. So that seems to be running the command center, though I don't see a turret control, which must, which must be in the bridge. So let's go investigate the bridge. Whee! Alrighty. Ooh, what goes this way? Oh, it's glass. It's just a viewport. I was like, oh, what goes that way? I thought that was a ramp. Um, very well done. Yet again, another example of how useful the small grid can be on setting up this not only the the consoles here which is really cool but also the the signature triangular type view of the of the bridge of imperial vessels or republic depending on which area you were in um let's see so this is just looks like a readout of various different things including inventory I really like this. This is a cool little gizmo here. I'm trying to figure out exactly how this was done. And I'm not doing too well at it here. 
It looks like there's a rotated arm at an angle coming off of... Yep, there it is. Okay, now I see it. It's got an elbow and then a rotated arm to give you this angled, angled panel here, which is a really nice little trick. That's pretty cool. Uh, same controls here, oddly enough. I don't see a way to control those custom turrets. Which is very surprising. Unless I'm just passing it, which is very likely. But I don't see any remote control blocks or anything like that. It's possible that they're auto turrets, because now that I think about it, I believe the blueprint did require the um, turret auto AI controller. So those custom turrets there are probably controlled via the scripts, and they're just going to target things, which is a really cool touch. Okay. So let's test out speed-wise. Um, acceleration is a little slow, but again, it's even it's actually a little faster than the first ship that we viewed. And really, once it gets going, it's not too bad on turning and rotation and all that. It's pretty pretty good for the size of the ship and everything. It actually moves really nice. So, yeah, overall, I really like this thing, especially just because of the level of detail and stuff put into it. It's really neat. So, on that, we're going to wrap this one up, and let's move on to the last one. Alright, so next up, we have Mario Kart. Or, well, according to the sprite there, it's Super Mario Kart. But, I'm pretty sure the name of this actual world file is Mario Kart Track, or something like that. Uh, my frames are a little hit at the moment, and I'm getting some stuttering here and there, but we're going to try and do our best to actually run through this. And I love, uh, if I remember correctly, the description mentioned that um, the pixel art was done through SE Toolbox. I'm assuming the importing um, using a picture type of thing. I'm not 100% sure on that, but it would be my guess. Uh, which, granted, the way that the the um, the way that the game is set up, pixel art is probably really easy to do because of it all being based on blocks and stuff. So that's pretty cool. Um, the track and the world, I think, set that damage is set to off. However, the vehicles can be damaged. It sounds like, and it looks like we're also using the. Um, ironically more stable tire down version <laughs> I don't know how that works where putting the tires down face down is more stable and more controllable than having the tires just facing up or like normal but it does seem to be that way all right so that has controls of the guns this is guns and rockets so we're going to use this seat instead oh this is Koopa I wanted Mario I didn't see Mario anywhere oh well whatever we don't have we don't have time for that. We just gotta just gotta go. Yeah, it's it's really weird to me how using thrusters and putting the tires as a spacer seems to work better. Ooh, we can do it this way too. Woo! Oh boy, I didn't think this through. Okay, it does work. They gave us enough. They gave us enough room. I just got going. I wasn't thinking we're we gotta like try and drift this a bit because unfortunately flying or driving this way does lend itself a bit more difficulty in braking because of the um, because of the time that basically you have to rely on inertia dampeners uh yeah no I think I'm going the right way I hope I'm going the right way I don't really know but yeah, this is actually pretty fun, and I have to admit, like, like I said, come on, slow down. Like I said, um, I don't really understand how it actually works, but these types of, of ground vehicles do seem to be much more stable than just trying to make actual cars with the tires like a normal vehicle is. I don't really know why. It doesn't make any sense to me, but it does seem to work. Alright, let's see if we can get a little risky here. Woo. Oh no! Oh! That was almost a disaster. Whew. 
I really actually thought I was going to be a pancake there for a minute. I am actually thoroughly impressed with myself on how well I'm doing. I haven't crashed yet. That should tell you how stable these... No, 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 no. Oh. I was going to say I haven't gone out of bounds yet either, and I almost did. But that should tell you how much more stable these kinds of vehicles are compared to... Uh, the typical way that you would make a ground vehicle is that I have not managed to... I have managed to not crash yet. Which should speak volumes for anybody who has seen my series for an extended period of time. Look at that. We made a whole lap. I didn't wreck. And I didn't go out of bounds. I love these kinds of designs for the cars. They're great. But overall, yeah, I like the track and everything, too. This is really cool. Oh, look, I even pulled a Fast and the Furious. Whoop. Now I'm gonna go off-road. Oh! <laughs> I got a little cocky there. So, yeah, overall, I do really like this kind of idea, and it's a really neat example of how you could make ground racetracks and things like that, but on top of it is really cool all of the pixel art that makes it very Mario Kart-y. It's really, really cool. Uh, the hazards and stuff, I think, honestly, could be a little bit more dangerous, because they're very easy to avoid, but um, that may have been on purpose. I don't really know. Truth be told, I played it. Uh, the original Mario Kart and stuff like that, but not very often. It was usually at friends' houses and stuff like that. I never actually owned it, so I don't remember much about it as far as that may very well be how they were originally done. I don't know. All of you uh, Super Mario Kart fans will have to tell me how authentic the track and stuff is, but I really like the addition of all the pixel art stuff. It definitely makes it feel more like it's out of that game and not Space Engineers. Uh, but on that note, I think we're going to wrap things up here for this episode. In the meantime, I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I will see you all next time. Peace.